What's up everybody, for the Wittitachi here, you know what it is. Thank you all very much for tuning in to our updated guide for Destruction Warlocks for patch 9.0.5. I've released guides in the past for Affliction, Demonology, and Destruction for the pre-patch of Shadowlands, and of course the first patch of Shadowlands, 9.0.2. And for all six of those videos, I want to say thank you all very much for your support. Um, I have learned a lot, and I hope this video is a little bit better than the others. Again, uh, my plan is to continue to release guides, continue to help out the Warlock community, and continue to improve on our videos. Uh, we are going to have timestamps this time around, so thank you all very much for that suggestion in the past. It's going to help, uh, especially for those of you that are looking for specific portions of this video to go ahead and rock over, so stay tuned for that in the description box or the comment section down below. Just go check it out by scrolling down. And uh, again, what these guides entail are they're technically starter guides for the the spec. Uh, this is for destruction warlocks, and it's basically going to be covering gems and chance and consumables, stat priority, talents, and rotation. We are not going to get into legendaries, conduits, soul binds, uh, specific areas and niches such as um, mythic plus key zones, raiding. Um, questing and all that type of stuff we'll be getting into those in different videos but here is basically an overview and an over basically an over thoughtful video for those of you that are new to the class that are new to the spec that want to go ahead and don't even play the spec but want to go ahead and figure out what a destruction warlock is all about and even if you're a veteran this is a great place to start before watching the rest of the videos that i release as guides throughout the rest of this patch and through the rest of this expansion so a Destruction Warlock is a damage DPS dealing spec with the primary stat of Intellect, a master of chaos who calls down fire to burn and demolish enemies, preferred weapon type of staff, wand, dagger, and sword, and main abilities of Incinerate, Chaos Bolt, Immolate, Conflagrate, Reign of Fire, and Summon Infernal. Next up we're going to be getting into the stat priority. We're going to be breaking this up into two separate portions. One focusing on PvE content such as questing, dungeons, and raids, and the other one focusing on more PvP content such as dueling, arenas, battlegrounds, and world PvP. So starting off with the PvE section of stats, you're going to be wanting to go with intellect over mastery, over haste, over crit, over versatility. Versatility as a warlock does not have too much of a benefit when it comes to PvE content. Again, it is not a dead stat, it just is outweighed by crit, haste, and mastery. Um, again, in this order, you're going to want to get intellect, which would pretty much be on all of your gear. Mastery over haste, over crit, over versatility. Now, when it comes to PvP content, it is pretty much the exact same thing, except versatility is now going to be your strong suited stat. So, for PvP, you're going to go with Intellect over Versatility, over Mastery, over Haste, over Crit. Next up, when it comes to consumables, this is pretty much going to be covering all types of consumables, as well as gems, as well as enchants, pretty much anything that you can to go ahead and buff up your character. So, gems, enchants, and consumables. Starting off with the gem, you're going to want to go with Masterful Jewel Cluster. As for the flask, you want to go with the Spectral Flask of Power. In regards to potion, a potion of Spectral Intellect. For your food, you're going to want to grab the Iridescent Ravioli with Applesauce. However, if your group does provide the Feast of Glutinous Hedonism, you're going to want to go ahead and grab the Feast instead. Extras, you have the Shadow Core Oil, which is a weapon buff. It does not replace your enchant so it is an extra additional buff that you can go ahead and apply to your weapon through shadow core oil and of course you have a heavy desolate armor kit again it does not replace your enchant on the chest piece it just go ahead and adds a buff to your chest of course you're going to want to go ahead and grab runes if you have available to you veiled augment runes which you can buy from the auction house you can also get from the mission table so on and so forth in regards to enchants, your rings are going to be Tenets of Mastery, your chest is going to be Eternal Stats, your weapon is going to be Celestial Guidance, your cloak is going to be Leech, your enchant boots is going to be Speed of Soul, it's technically your agility slots when it comes to enchants, but Speed of Soul can give you a slight buff. 
Uh, when it comes to your gloves, you're going to want to go with Shadowlands Gathering if you have any Gathering Professions. Otherwise, you're going to want to just not enchant your gloves at all because these are all strength-specific enchants. And of course, when it comes to your bracers, this is where you're going to get most of your uh, intellect stats, which is going to be coming from Eternal Intellect Enchant. Next up, we're going to be getting into the talents for a Destruction Warlock, and it is kind of just straightforward. Of course, there are some situations to where you will be replacing one talent with another for single target, or one ta talent and another for a PvP situation. I will kind of roughly go over that, but do not expect a full-on guide to where best talents for PvP arenas or best talents for Mythic Keystones. Stay tuned for another video on that. Um, and also, again, this is just a, a standard setup for a Destruction Warlock. First here, we've got Flashover, Eradication, and Soul Fire. We've got an outlier here, which is Soul Fire, meaning it is the most useless talent compared to the other two. I wish it wasn't because I do like to have talents where I'm getting something that's not just passive, but again, it is not beneficial in any way, shape, or form. Of course, it is beneficial, but compared to the other two. Flashover is the highest DPS increase over Eradication, so we're going to go with Flashover. Next up, you're going to be using Reverse Entropy. Shadowburn is very unique when it comes to PvP situations, but when it comes to PvE, not really beneficial. And then, of course, Infernal Combustion is an absolute dead talent. Next up, you've got three talents that are very unique and versatile to certain situations. Demon Skin and Dark Pack are two defensive cooldowns. Well, one's a cooldown, one's a passive ability. Uh, Dark Pack you would use if you are expecting a lot of incoming damage to use as a bubble to help healers out, for example, in a PvE situation or even in PvP. But Demon Skin overall is the better defensive ability. Burning Rush is very, very nice uh, from getting from points A to point B. It's an increase of movement speed, so if you're expecting a lot of movement in a fight, strongly suggest going with Burning Rush. Next up, all three of these are pretty much AoE or multi-target abilities. Um, Fire and Brimstone and Cataclysm are the two stronger options. Uh, Inferno is not really a strong option at all. Cataclysm is my favorite go-to option, uh, especially in single target. There are certain situations where Fire and Brimstone do outbeat or outweigh damage-wise uh, uh, over Cataclysm in multiple target situations, but... If you're just looking for a, a, a standard setup build for Destruction, I strongly suggest going with Cataclysm. Uh, when it comes to the next set of talents, of course, just like what we did with the Demon Skin setup, uh, Dark Fury is very unique. Uh, for example, uh, PvE boss fight, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of ads, a lot of uh, abilities, or a lot of mobs that you want to get stunned. Uh, go ahead and rock with uh, Dark Fury. Howl of Terror, mostly a PvP ability. It's an AoE fear, but it's not really beneficial too much. Uh, I strongly suggest going with Mortal Coil in both situations. Uh, it is a nice defensive cooldown for PvE players. We can't encapacate a boss, but it is nice because you get the healing in you for 20% of maximum health. And of course, uh, in PvP, it is very, very nice to have as well. It gives you a lot of control. Next up, Grimmio Sacrifice is not a destruction talent, so don't even bother with it. Uh, Reign of Chaos is my go-to here. Um, however, Roaring Blaze is very, very nice. Uh, Reign of Chaos is the go-to when it comes to just straight up uh, multi-target damage, but it is very close to single target damage uh, with Roaring Blaze. However, if you want to push those numbers, I strongly suggest Roaring Blaze. And then last but not least, Soul Conduit is dead. And then, of course, last but not least, you have pretty much either Instability or Channel Demon Fire. I strongly suggest going with Demon Fire. Very, very cool ability to have, and it is very good in both single target and multi-target, and of course, in both PvE and PvP situations. So to recap, uh, definitely Flashover into Reverse Entropy into Demon Skin. However, the other two have their, their, uh, their usage. Uh, Cataclysm. Fire and Brimstone in very limited situations, but pretty much you will always be going with Cataclysm. Mortal Coil, the other two have their usage as well, depending on the certain situations. Reign of Chaos, um, if you just want to go rock with Reign of Chaos, but again, Roaring Blaze does beat Ro uh, Reign of Chaos in single target for sure. And then of course, last but not least, Channel Demon Fire is the go-to. Next up, we're going to be getting into the Destruction Warlock PvP talents, starting off with Focused Chaos. Passive ability, Chaos Bolt damage is increased by 40%, but no longer strikes additional targets inflict, uh, inflicted by habit. So this is a very, very strong 
uh, duels as well as arenas type of ability. However, it is very useless. It's, it's not useless, but it isn't as strong as other abilities that you can choose from from the PvP talents when it comes to like uh, more larger scaled combat such as Raging Battlegrounds and World PvP. But uh, Focus Chaos is definitely a good PvP talent. Cremation passive conflagrate deals up to an additional 3% of the target's maximum health and fire damage if the target is afflicted by your immolate. Uh, nothing else really to say about that one. It is a very, very good ability to utilize, uh, and it is a DPS increase. Uh, Bane of Havoc replaces Havoc, curses the ground with the demonic Bane, causing all of your single target spells to also strike uh, targets uh, marked with the Bane last for 12 seconds. So it's basically an amplified Bane of Havoc. Um, Basically, it, it's, it's, it's an Amplified Havoc called Bane of Havoc, and uh, it just basically has all of your single target abilities, including Chaos Bolt, to strike anyone within the vicinity. So I absolutely love it, especially for uh, Battlegrounds, and uh, as well as uh, World PvP on, on a large scale. Uh, Bane of Fragility reduces the target's maximum health by up to 15% for 10 seconds. Do not use it, it is useless. Nether Ward surrounds a caster with a shield that lasts 3 seconds, reflecting all harmful spells cast on you. Very, very good in uh, dueling and as well as arenas when faced off against any type of spell casting. Um, Essence Strain is another defensive cooldown. Um, this one's passive though, so whenever you heal yourself with Drain Life, the enemy target deals 5% reduced damage to you for 6 seconds, stacks up to 5 times. Not really a fan of it, um, comparing it to other. Uh, talents, so I'm not gonna really suggest this one. I would rather, as a defensive cooldown, have another word. I have other ways to deal with melee type classes. Casting circle, summon the casting circle for eight seconds while within the casting circle. You are immune to silence and interrupt effects. Now this has gotten a buff, but it is still the worst freaking PvP talent for a warlock. Demon armor. I wish this was baseline. Uh, protects the caster, increasing maximum health by 5% and increases armor by 160%. With a buff in patch 9.0.5, in my opinion, I'd rather demon armor than netherwood. Both of them are very, very nice to have. Um, gateway mastery. Increases the range of demonic gateway by 20 yards and reduces the cast time by 30%. Reduces the cast time between how often players can take your demonic gateway by 15 seconds. I'm not going to hate on this, but it is kind of useless comparing it to other talents that you can choose. So it's kind of sad. They, they Technically, they should just make this into a glyph. I, I don't know. Just make it freaking baseline. I don't know. It's, it's never going to be used by anyone, which is kind of sad. Don't use it. But I love it. But don't use it. Fell Fissure, passive Chaos Bolt, creates a 5 yard wide eruption of Fell Fire under the target, reducing movement speed by 50% and reducing all healing received by 25% on all enemies within the Fissure, last 6 seconds. Very nice uh, in Battlegrounds only, or large scale world PvP. Um, I have this in combination with Bane of Havoc, uh, because again, Chaos Bolt, you get the freaking biggest Fell Fissure of your life if you can freaking hit enough people. Uh, all the redu reduction on movement speed and healing, it, it's just absolutely bangs. So Battlegrounds and World PvP on a large scale, Fell Fissure with Bane of Havoc is nice. And last but not least, Amplify Curse. Your next curse of exhaustion, tongues, and weakness. Really bro, in the background while I'm filming it? Really bro? Alright, I'm gonna ignore it. Um, curse of Exhaustion reduces the target's movement speed by an additional 20%. Curse of Tongues increases casting time by 30%. And Curse of Weakness, enemy is unable to critically strike. This is technically, in my opinion, a mandatory PvP ability um, or PvP talent. So I strongly suggest you use Amplify Curse. In recap, uh, Focused Chaos is very, very good, uh, especially in duels as well as arenas. Uh, cremation is also a very, very high uh, DPS based ability, and I strongly suggest this one in single target uh, duels as well as arenas as well. Uh, Focused Chaos and Cremation I usually use when I'm dueling someone, or I always use these when I'm dueling someone, and of course also in uh, arenas to a certain extent. Um, I don't suggest Focus Chaos or Cremation in Battlegrounds or World PvP on a large scale, and the reason being is I'd rather go with Bane of Havoc as well as Fell Fissure. But, as you can see, Bane of Havoc is also another useful talent. Bane of Fragility, I don't suggest at all. Nether Ward is a very, very nice defensive cooldown, especially against casters. Essence Strain, I don't really suggest it. Casting Circle, worst talent to choose. Demon Armor is nice. I wish we had a fourth slot. 
and then I would choose the Imanomu. Uh, most of the time, especially uh, Nether Ward being more casting based, I would choose Demon Armor if I feel that I'm going to have to need uh, an extra defensive ability uh, against melee. Uh, Gateway Mastery, again, like I've said, I love it, but it's just useless. Uh, Fell Fissure uh, for Battlegrounds and World PvP in combination with Bane of Havoc is very, very nice. And Amplify Curse is technically just a mandatory uh, PvP talent in my opinion. Alright, next up we're going to get into the single target rotation for a Destruction Warlock. To be honest, probably one of the easier uh, specs to play in the game, and definitely the easiest of the three uh, when it comes to Warlock. We're not going to be getting into Covenant-based abilities. For example, I'm a Necrolord. We're not going to be utilizing Decimating Bolt. We're just going to stick to the standard setup for a Destruction Warlock to not confuse too many people. But stay tuned in other videos when I go into deep details on that. Um, we're going to be not utilizing potions, trinkets, all that type of stuff. This is the standard setup for a Destruction Warlock. And if you're wondering what talents I am utilizing, pretty much the ones that we went over with earlier. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and start off again. You want to go ahead and keep Immolate up on the target at all times. Utilizing Conflagrate to generate uh, Soul Shards and get your Backdraft in order to utilize that onto Chaos Bolts. Uh, utilizing Incinerate as your main filler. Gonna want to utilize Channel Demon Fire on cooldown, Cataclysm on cooldown to reapply that Immolate, but sometimes again Immolate uh, drops before Cataclysm's off cooldown. So go ahead and cast your Immolate in between to go ahead and weave that. Uh, but without further ado, starting off, Pet of Choice is going to be the Imp. Uh, questing, tanky combat, you're gonna want your Void Lord, and then the Observer and the Shivara are usually used in PvP type of situations. So without further ado, Immolate into a Conflagrate, into a couple of uh, incinerates to just go ahead and generate as many soul shards as possible. Now you're going to be utilizing your backdrafts on chaos bolts, of course, on cooldown. You're going to want to go ahead and utilize your infernal on cooldown. Utilize your cataclysm on cooldown. Utilize channel demon fire. Again, keeping up your emulate on target at all times. Do not overcap on your uh, soul shards. Use your backdrafts on chaos bolts from the conflagrate. But again, you do never, never want to go ahead and go over your five soul shards. So. Just keep uh, weaving in um, Chaos Bolts uh, to utilize those backdrafts. But again, if you're over 5 Soul Shards or you're very, very close to 5 Soul Shards, you don't want to go ahead and drop over that. But again, Channel Demon Fire on cooldown, Cataclysm on cooldown, and of course, get that Chaos Bolt in. Once you uh, start feeling you're, you're, you're running above the, uh, the Soul Shard limit and you have pretty much nothing else to do. Uh, but Chaos Bolts are pretty much your strong suit when it comes to the damage that you're going to be doing as a destruction warlock and it is pretty pretty straightforward now we're going to get into multi-target rotation for destruction warlock and it is identical it is pretty much the exact same thing as your single target rotation you're going to try to keep emulate up on all targets possible um there is a cap to it but you're pretty much never going to reach the cap onto emulate um but meaning there's a hard cap to emulate to where how many you can keep up by yourself and that is a hard cap of eight. So if there's eight or more targets, uh, try to just keep up emulate on eight targets and utilize your cataclysm to keep that emulate up. Um, when it comes to uh, weaving in uh, Bane of Havoc and uh, Chaos Bolts, I only suggest that on two targets. Anything above two targets, just go ahead and start using Rain of Fire because Rain of Fire outbeats the uh, Chaos Bolt Havoc rotation. However, we're gonna go ahead and start off with a two target rotation. Then we'll do a little bit of a, a pause and then we'll go into a three plus targets example with the two targets that we have in front of us. So start off with a Cataclysm cast to get your emulate. Utilize your uh, channel Demon Fire on cooldown, uh, Bane of Havoc, and start spamming your Chaos Bolts. Chaos Bolts are going to be going on all targets. Uh, of course, I have Bane of Havoc due to PvP, but again, in your case, this will be just a regular Havoc. Um, again, keep uh, emulate up on all targets. Uh, utilize your incinerate as your filler to generate as many soul shards as possible and again channel demon fire on cooldown cataclysm will also be on cooldown and utilize that backdraft with the uh the havoc to go ahead and spam those chaos bolts but again if your havoc is on cooldown and you do have five plus soul shards just go ahead and utilize your um your chaos bolts uh, as you see fit next up we're going to go ahead and uh, just rack up quickly five soul shards and go ahead and show you the uh the rotation without havoc and chaos bolts and just utilizing your um your reign of fire so again we're just going to wait about six more seconds until cataclysms off cooldown and start the fight with that and here we go 
So, start off your fight keeping up Immolate on all targets. Utilize your channel Demon Fire and your Cataclysm on, um, on cooldown. And just basically spam Rain of Fire. Whenever you have 3 plus Soul Shards, go ahead and spam Rain of Fire. Sorry about that. I was on a different rotation right there. And utilize um, your Incinerate and your Conflagrate to go ahead and uh, pretty much rack up as many um, Soul Shards as you possibly can. To just keep weaving in your Rain of Fire. Um, you're not going to be utilizing uh, Chaos Bolts on 3 plus targets. Again, Cataclysm on cooldown, Channel Demon Fire on cooldown. You could be use, utilizing your uh, your Infernal as well, just to give you a heads up. Again, keep Immolate up on all targets. And again, utilize uh, your Backdraft now on your Incinerate to go ahead and get as many Soul Shards out. Uh, to be able to you go ahead and cast your Reign of Fire. Thank you all very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you out as much as possible. Treat this as a starter guide to the guides that are to come. Uh, we are going to be releasing videos for Demonology, Affliction, and Destruction. These are all updated videos from our patch 9.0.2 videos now to patch 9.0.5. Stay tuned. Again, we got more videos to come like this in patch 9.0.1. or 9 .1, Sorry. Um, however, uh, for 9.0.5, stay tuned. Again, we're going to be combining all three specs into a legendary guide, a conduit guide, a covenant guide, as well as a soulbind guide. And I will also be creating videos based off of specific situations for specific specs. For example, the best talents and the best setups for Demonology Warlock in duels. The best talents and the best setups for Demonology Warlock in a Mythic Plus Keystone run. So on and so forth. Because there's so many situations out there, there's so many scenarios out there for us to play in. I want to go ahead and give you guys an overall guide, which is what you're seeing here. And then start diving on in to specific guides in the future. But those guides will actually be coming out as sooner than you think. So stay tuned. Like this video, share the video, and I'll catch you all next time, and please subscribe.